So I was lost in the world that had collapsed around me. My life was torn apart for the first 45 to 50 years until I could begin to regain my footing and detransition back to being Walt. And I eventually went to um, a therapist uh, at Pasadena in Pasadena and he had a friend who was a pastor in Pleasanton, California and he called him and said, gee, could you take in this broken transgender soul and maybe help him? My friend Roy told me that Walt was uh, uh, living as a female and he'd gone to churches and been rejected and so sadly many places he'd gone for affirmation affirmed him in the wrong things, that he wasn't acceptable, that he was beyond God's forgiveness. I was just coming out of the recovery home I'd been in for four months. It was a woman's recovery home and so when I met Jeff I had no idea where this was going to go. When Walt came in, uh, diminutive in style and conservative, and as I got to know him over time, was a person who had seriously come to the Lord uh, uh, earlier and had walked with the Lord, been involved in a church and committed as a leader. And that's not what I was expecting. Jeff is uh, kind of an unusual character in that he's sort of like this big bear and you don't know whether he's going to devour you or whether he's just going to love on you. I was expecting a pagan, somebody who just came out of San Francisco and a hard lifestyle and needed help. But that wasn't all the deal with Walt. And through addiction and some of the crazy thinking any of us can get involved in, he went through gender reassignment surgery. And to his horror, he realized the mistake he'd made. He didn't come with judgment. He knew he didn't know what to do. And he knew that he had to get information, but he also went back to scripture. He was trying to fight his way back, in my understanding, to trust in what the Lord said was true about him instead of what he felt and what he'd seen out of himself. He knew that he didn't want to affirm me toward being staying as Laura, but he, did, he also knew that he didn't want to come down with me hard he knew that there was a better way to do it, and he was being led by the Holy Spirit to do that. What I began to realize very quickly in our conversation is that we connected so dramatically. He's so bright and so clever and so quick and so full of fun, even though we were talking about very heavy things. He's a little tough sometimes, but I was a little tough. We had uh, times that were really great, um, but we had times that were really difficult. I think the most important thing about Jeff is his absolute desire to listen. The Lord had been working in us as a church, the leadership especially. I think the Lord kind of called our bluff because we kept saying, Lord, like we want to be a church of diversity. And we know we're not any good at this. We don't know how to do it. Well, we want to reflect you. And it's like he said, oh, yeah, here's one. <laughs> I thought, oh, now what do we do? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> And so it was an unknown adventure, but the Lord's hand and to me was in it all the way. In our first meeting, we agreed to two things, that he'd let me tell him the truth, even if it meant I didn't understand what he was going through and even if I said things that were hurtful unintentionally. I, I told Walt, I don't know anything about this. And he said, that's, that's okay, no big deal. And I also said, I need to talk to our elders about this for my insight and protection. They're good men, they won't gossip, they'll pray for us. And Walt agreed to both of those things. So that gave me kind of a role to play with Walt, that when he came in, I felt like my call was to affirm him in the truth of God by my love. That I loved him, I appreciated him, he belonged here, forgiveness was available, God cares about him. And I sometimes think the most effective thing I ever did was to be a safe, loving authority figure. And so that relationship, uh, while it had its difficulty and it had its success, it had its trouble and ups and downs over a period of years, uh, we developed this great relationship where we admire each other, we respect each other, we trust each other. And it was all built on a foundation of scripture. I wasn't always that smart or that right, but I believed in him. And then he had to make his own choices. There's things that as a, a transgender person, I needed to admit that I made a mistake. It was wrong for me to turn my body over to surgeons. 
to turn my body over to hormone therapy. That was wrong. And that it wasn't going to benefit my life in the long run. He'd come in with an issue and I'd often think, I got no clue what that's about. But I, I know what I think about Walt. So as he processes it, and it helped that Walt was so bright, so engaging, an issue came up, he attacked it. So it wasn't like I had to pull him into the process. He was trying to keep me up to speed with his. And so I feel like, uh, very simply, that's what I'm called to do. And that's what Jesus did. The Holy Spirit really couldn't rest easy and work in a life that had been so broken and destroyed by man's surgical operations and hormone therapy. And that once I confessed I was wrong, it allowed the door to open in my life, in my heart, and the Lord to come in and begin to work through those issues. And that's what Jeff, the church, and my relationship with Christ evolved into. There was just a lot of people who began being involved in my life. And that was, and they came into my life when I admitted I was wrong. And that's the point of where change takes place. You can't keep pushing this idea that this is right when it's not right. Your gender and your sex are absolutely fixed at conception and they are unchangeable. You know, some of us as counselors say, well, I'll give six sessions to a person and do this and we'll do that. And we, we set up boundaries for very good reasons, but you can't dictate that process. Any more than the disciples knew that when the Lord said, go across the lake in the middle of the night and they ran into a storm, they didn't know he was in control of that. I mean, really, that's a stupid place to be in the middle of a lake in a monster storm in the middle of the night. How'd they get there? They obeyed the Lord. He said, get in the boat and row across. And they could never knew he was the Lord of the storms until they were sinking. And so that, that kind of process, I think, is the one where life is full of storms. I'm not in control. And sadly, you know, in, instead of us laying a, a, a model of leadership that the world can learn from, we just learn to ape the world. So something out of control, we bring an expert in to solve it. Or if we're really good leaders, we have a sense of always knowing what's going on and being in control. That's fine unless the Spirit of God shows up. So having that, holding loosely my sense of control was critical to the process that I was a part of. I never knew or even how it would end, but it's a wild ride when you walk with the Lord. If you want to call it breakthrough came when Walt said, the Lord's healed me. I'm never going back as Laura. It's over. I want to come back to church as Walt, which scared me to death because I was afraid if he, if he did and then he failed, we might lose him. And so I was protective of him. I didn't say no, but our elders prayed about it and said, there's no reason not to do this. And so we decided to have a Sunday and where I preached on Zacchaeus, a man nobody ever would have believed could be saved. So I got up and said, here's the story. It absolutely blew everybody's mind, especially the disciples. And, and, um, and I want to tell you about my friend Walt. And I told his story briefly. The abuse, the struggles, the gender issues. And I said, I want to introduce my friend Walt Heyer this morning. And people stood up and applauded. It was the most powerful woman I think I've ever been a part of. And I think for Walt, that, that established a moment where he realized he really was Zacchaeus. And he had been uniquely laid hold of by the Lord. And God was doing something miraculous. And if he wasn't all on board before, he was now. Once I got redeemed and restored by Christ through the church and, be, and detransitioned and then began to... Um, deal with life on life's terms and then got married to a really beautiful smart lady who has been my companion now for 22 years and married and it's exciting and we began 10 years ago to develop this ministry and so through the ministry it's healed me to be able to help with, uh, with other people who are struggling there's nothing like being able to speak into other people's lives who who can see their own brokenness in my life and what happened to them. So they see the, that you can be healed by looking at my life. When the Lord sends people to us, 
that scare us. People that we don't know what to do with. We don't know if we should trust what they're saying. We need to prepare ourselves and expect the Lord to put us in comfortable, uncomfortable positions. He was always doing that to disciples. You know, the church is really a hospital for broken people. And people who come in that have gender dysphoria um, are broken just like everybody else. And they are not unique in their brokenness. They're only unique in how they wear their brokenness. But we need to treat them in a way that invites them to admit their wrong and invite them to the redeeming and restoration power of Jesus Christ, because that's what it's about. That's what the church is all about. It's about healing. It's not about leaving people alone. Churches who, who advocate, well, you can come and just stay transgender, stay whatever you want. That's not what the Lord Jesus Christ has for the church. It's about change. Walt helped me to not be so afraid of making a mistake. Walt wanted, I think, the love and affirmation and friendship and acceptance. And so we began to kind of walk side by side, even though there were times we didn't see things the same way. And we saw him differently and things hit him real hard that I didn't think were gonna hit him hard. So being expecting and preparing as much as you can, that it's not wrong people come to church that don't know where to sit, that talk during the sermon, that let their kids jump off the platform. That's exactly where they should be, even though it ruins our plans. And having that openness to the Lord and the wisdom to control chaos versus let the room go. That's the adventure of life with God. He's forever walking us into things. We are completely unqualified to master. And now he, then he says, I got you right where I want you. You're ready now.